on something very archaic, the particle when he takes Boston, which Professor Chris mentioned in his presentation. It is nicknamed as the God particle. So it would be very um, critical to our understanding of the universe if the discovery of Higgs boson uh, is achieved. And since last year, Salam's name has resurfaced due to um, the reminder of his work in uh, characterizing the then hypothetical Higgs boson in the 60s. So before calling Tom Kibble um, to explain to us Salam's contribution uh, to theoretical physics and his contribution and Salam's contribution to Higgs boson, I will try to explain to you in a layman's term what the Higgs boson is, how do you look for it, and why is it important. So let's assume that this is our early universe and we fill it with some particles, electron and quarks. So in the early universe, these electrons and particles in general would be moving at the speed of light, having no mass, behaving massless, just like the photon. Now, a trillion seconds after the Big Bang, something called the Higgs field came into existence and it grew as the universe grew. So let's take our empty universe and fill it with our Higgs field. Yeah, everybody's been surprised. They've been looking at what sugar has to do with Higgs boson. So we're filling the early universe with the Higgs field. Okay, and let's grab the electrons, quarks, quarks. Now, heavy particles like the top quarks get bogged down and the more the heavier particle it is, the more bogged down it gets. The field essentially interacts uh, to different extents with different particles. Light particles like electrons um, are very light. <coughs> the effect of the uh, Higgs field uh, was to, or is, to <coughs> introduce a drag force which slows these particles down and they're no longer traveling at the speed of light in the universe. Um, there is an exception, and that's the photon. Despite the Higgs field um, in existence, it still moves around the universe as if it's not there. And it still behaves as massless, it's still traveling at the speed of light. And in doing so, this gives weight to the other particles. Now what is Higgs boson? The Higgs boson is represented by the grain of sugar in this analogy. Now what scientists are looking for is a grain of sugar. And this is the universe. So, um, the scientists, and I'll try to use the words here. All right. Okay, so the scientists in the uh, in CERN, which is the largest uh, collider, the most powerful collider in the world, 27 kilometers in circumference and 100 meters wide uh, in the countryside of France and Switzerland, what you have is an enormous pipe, proton pipe, that emits protons. These are protons, and these protons are emitted at each other in these large underground tunnels uh, near the speed of light. And they're detected in, in detectors which are three stories high. So the protons are colliding and traveling at the speed of light. The constituents of the protons collide, they crash, and what you get is a very small but a very <laughs> a very strong flash of energy. <coughs> you get electrons coming out, you get quarks coming out, you get light coming out, and occasionally you 
we get the Higgs boson coming out. Now, the Higgs boson is not stable. It decays to other particles as soon as it's created, which can undergo further decay into other particles. So it's very, very difficult and time consuming to be looking for a Higgs boson. However, if the discovery is made, it will give us a critical understanding of the universe and it will be a monumental achievement in science. The thing about finding this single simplest form of Higgs boson is that it rounds off your theories and gives you a really nice package of understanding the certain laws of nature. Finding something more complex is better because it gives you a road into a new area, into a new realm of physics, and that's what scientists have their fingers crossed for. So, I tried to explain Higgs boson in the simplest way possible, 